up? Yes, it is Monday, which means it's the time for another edition of The Romania Show. Yes, we are live. Now, before I forget, some people already asked me uh, what happened to the thing I promised over the weekend. Well, I'll tell you exactly what happened. It was uh, Saturday, and that was my free time to do something, and I had a little paper, and it was exactly all these things planned out, and... Quite frankly, I fell asleep. I was super tired, so that's what happened then. So, too bad, so sad. Don't worry, we'll do it another time. Uh, there's always fun stuff coming up, and we're getting things to hang, uh, getting the hang of things. Uh, Friday, we had a little trouble with the visual. I'm looking at it right now, and it looks like it's going across pretty good on the live version, which is cool. Uh, looks like I fixed that problem. So, uh, I do want to thank all of you who sent me kind messages. I'll turn on the Twitter now. And if you want to send a message to me on Twitter, you can use the Romania Show hashtag and you'll see it live. If you're watching it live, you can uh, use that hashtag and the little application there will pop it up automatically as I'm uh, going along here. So that's cool, and we also got Skype turned on. Uh, I saw at least two people uh, added me on Skype. It's The Romania Show, pretty obvious. Uh, and if you want to call me on Skype, we got Skype hooked up, and I think uh, all our technological problems have been fixed since Friday. Uh, there's a terrible echo in my headphones, but I had to have it set up this way just so that you guys can hear what I'm hearing. And I can make sure that everything goes together pretty good. So, Timmy, we're all set? All right, Timmy's on board. Kids, you ready? All right, so it's time for Monday. That's right. So, what's going on? Well, there's a big election over the weekend, and it was the local elections, which means everybody voted for their local mayor or uh, county council, city council, that kind of things. And the red team is partying up like it's 1999 uh, because they won a great deal of elections. Now, if you see that in the news, you're like, oh, hey, these guys are crushing the orange team, which uh, technically is true. Uh, unfortunately, um, as I mentioned before, there's something like 3,000 mayors in, in Romania, so, you know... If the red team, you know, I'm the mayor of a village of a couple thousand people. It's not really that big of a deal. Now, orange team, you know, they got their problems. But let's look, have a look at some of the bigger cities. Start off with Bucharest, the capital. Can't go wrong there, right? Well, Oprescu, who was the mayor, uh, was re-elected. Uh, theoretically, he's an independent. But he was a longtime member of the red team. And this year, the red team did not. I keep saying the red team. Uh, that's just my simple way of explaining it. Of course, it's uh, PSD or PSD in Romanian. It's a political party. Uh, their logo is red, so I call him the red team. He didn't. Uh, the red team didn't run someone against him. Um, he ran against uh, a couple of different people. One, including the orange team guy, a guy I debated on TV once. You know, <laughs> this poor guy. I mean, uh, I, I saw him on TV during the campaign. He's a, he's a nice guy. He seems like a kind of guy I would like to have a drink with or like hang out with and you know shoot the breeze with. But you know. Uh, other guys just way too organized. So he won. Uh, the red team mayor of Yash, the second biggest city in Romania, uh, also a red team member. He was re-elected. He's the idiot who, uh, when his buddy Victor Ponta, the current red team prime minister of Romania, was in town and six people, seven people perhaps, uh, dared to boo him in public. Red team mayor got his goons to find them all 700 lake. He was re-elected. Uh, Mazare, Mr. Pease, if you remember my show from Friday, or Thursday rather, uh, the corrupt Don, the fascist Don of Constanza, re-elected, uh, you know, i I'll be honest with you, I saw a couple of people running against him, um, I think it was, uh, Wednesday or Thursday last week, and they were talking about this guy, I mean, he is crooked as the day is long, and people are are so afraid of him that even though they have evidence that he's been up to no good, you know, they're actually too afraid uh, to do anything in court against this guy because he's out of control. Orange team winners, uh, the mayor of Brasov, my favorite city in Romania. Uh, the mayor is not my favorite. His name is Skripkaru. He's an orange team member, was the mayor, was also re-elected as the mayor. This guy uh, is 
I, I mostly know him because he's uh, famous for being a dog killer. He rigged up a system where the more dogs you kill, homeless dogs, the more money you make. So, ka yay, let's kill dogs for money. And here in Unicorn City, a.k.a. Clues Napoca, uh, we still don't know who won. Uh, the final results between uh, having been tabulated, and some exit polls said Ornstein Bok, a.k.a. the former prime minister, uh, won. Other results say that the red and yellow team guy won. Either way, it's about 40% to 40%. And we're going to have to wait until an official count because they're saying there's all kinds of irregularities and normal kind of stuff. I mean, normal for Romania in the sense that, you know, how hard it is to count a few thousand votes? Well, you know, there's always something going on. But hey, even if the election is 1,000% honest, that nobody, uh, there's no fraud, no cheating, no messing around, 40% is what the winner got, around 40%. And out of the total electorate, the number of people that could vote, uh, there was only about 50% of the voters even bothered to show up to vote. So if you do the math, what's 40% of 50%, which means that the mayor, whoever he is, whoever gets, uh, ended up being declared the winner, approximately 20, 21% of the people voted for him. So basically one in five. And that's the popular, democratically elected leader of the third biggest city in the country. <sighs> it's uh, democracy in action, folks. What can you do? But, uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, Cluj has a lot of students who live here, or former students actually, too, as well. And I know people have been here like eight years and they can't vote because Romania's got this uh, system where you can only vote where you're officially residing. But changing where you officially reside is extremely difficult. It's not like in America, people, by the way, I'll just say this for any Romanians here watching this. In America, I live here, and then tomorrow I move over there. Well, I just go down to the driver's license people, basically, and say, all right, I live over there. And they say, all right, now you live over there. And one, two, three, that's simple as that. And uh, in fact, in Canada, it's even easier. They actually give you a sticker and you just, Stick it on your on your on your ID and you're done. Here in Romania, it's like you gotta go to the police. You gotta have like ten pieces of paper stamped. You gotta say like I officially swear up and down, and here's ten pieces of proof that I even have a new residence. So what ends up happening is wherever you grew up, that's your parents' house. That's your official residence. So then maybe you go to Cluj, for example, as a student, and you grab you stay here four years, you graduate, then you get a job here. Well you're still technically officially residing back in your parents' house. So you got all these people who are legally not even able to vote, but they live in Cluj, they pay taxes in Cluj, everything that affects them goes on in Cluj, and they can't even participate in the vote. So 20% or 21%, if we're going to be generous, of the people who even can vote voted for this, you know, whoever was the winner, or will be the winner, and a whole, if we actually count how many people that truly do live here, just not on paper, well, you know, we're talking 10-15% of the population, you know, popular support. So it's, uh, it's a bad system, and I wrote on my blog, kingofromania.com, that, uh, you know, there was supposed to be a debate between these two jokers in here in Cluj last week, and one guy, Bok, showed up, and he got one of his goons to take a picture of him and say, look at me, I showed up, and the other guy, uh, he never came, and I'm here all by myself, so that guy's a punk, he didn't show up. He apparently had to go to some rally at a Manelli disco up the street, and the other guy said, no, I showed up, and then Bok, as soon as he saw me, pew! We ran out the back of the fire, you know, the fire door. So they're not even civilized enough to sit down and debate this. And you know, if Bulk should be elected, he's Orange Team, the county uh, governor. I guess that's how you translate in English. The the Judes uh, level. He's going to be a red, a red and yellow team guy. So those two guys aren't going to get together or work together. Now here's the problem. Now. In Romania in general, uh, there's a really bad system going on, which is that 
let's imagine Bob did win. He's orange team. And right now the prime minister and the power people are the red and yellow team. Well, Bucharest, or the national government, has a tremendous say over how much money goes to the city. Now, let's say imagine Cluj actually is uh, doing really well, they got lots of businesses, people are doing good, they're, and they're raising all these funds. Well, a tremendous portion of that money goes to Bucharest, and then you have to depend on the people in Bucharest and the national government to send that money back to you. So everybody knows, that's why before, you know, Bulk was orange team and uh, the president's orange team and the orange team was in power. Well, Cluj was doing good because they knew, hey, we're orange team, our buddies in orange team in, are on the orange team in Bucharest will send us the money and we're golden. So let's imagine I have zero preference between Bulk and the red and yellow team guy, whose name I forgot to write down in it because I honestly don't know much about him except he's an old communist bastard. Same as Bulk, but there's no difference. One is, you know, a little more polite. All right. So, let's imagine Bulk does win. Yay, Bulk, yeah, hey, you won. Congratulations, dude. Well, bad move, because the red team's running Bucharest right now, which means the red team's not going to send any money to Cluj, so even if Cluj's doing fantastic, they're not going to get any of their money back. So, actually, I have to kind of hope that the red team guy wins, just so that we can get the money from Bucharest that we need that Cluj actually earned. Now, of course, the national elections will take place later this year. We don't know right now exactly when, maybe September, October, November. Red team stays in power. I want a red team mayor. I don't even care who actually it is. I don't even care which one, you know, which guy or how good he is or, you know, if it is he, how efficient he is or what great ideas he has. You want to get your money, you got to have your man down in Big Rest in it to you. So, that's the story with that. And in fact, uh, I spoke, uh, I believe it was last week sometime, about how Pontus first day on the job, he appointed this guy, uh, Adrian Balaban Krajdan, and he did all this stuff with the former red team prime minister, and got him out of this court case and all this other stuff. The other thing that Pontus did on his first day on the job was, right before uh, the orange team you know, got knocked out of power, they sent a bunch of money to their orange team mayors. Well, first thing Pontus did when he was in office, first day, Hey, we need that money back, and then there was a little, they took it to court and all this other crap. So you know, hey, that's that's Romania, right? Oh, there was one other winner. I wanted to mention in Craiova, which is a fairly large industrial city. Uh, Oguza Vasilescu, red team member, she won uh, the mayor race down there. That woman is crazy as a outhouse rat. I'm telling you, uh, I've mentioned it before in the blog, but basically, she's convinced that. You know, Orange Team are the devils, and they're, oh, everything they do is designed to steal and rob and, you know, whatever else. Yeah, okay, sure. Plus, she was a cuckoo who defended Yon Mong, who was the, uh, one, two, three, five, now I'm just joking, the second failed education minister uh, nominee. I believe he was actually confirmed. He was the second nominee, the first one to get the post, had to resign because he's a plagiarist. You know, and as somebody said before, uh, not on this show, but said to me before, you know, the guy's still a professor. And it's clearly been proved that both he and his crooked little wife, you know, been plagiarized and stealing. You know, they don't, the guy can barely, you know, ABC, you can write that down. You know, hey, congratulations, John, you did a good job trying to write, you know, complex theses about, you know, crypto, cryptanalysis and uh, how those computer chips work. And, uh, honey, let's just copy from someone else's piper. Yeah. Well, Olguza Vasilescu, his number one fan, now the mayor of Craiova. And in Timisoara, the red team won, knocking out the PNCCD, which is um, the Peasants' Party, I guess is how you translate it in English. Now, only in Timisoara am I aware of that this Peasants' Party has any kind of like actual... Uh, significant following. I mean, they got a few followers everywhere. They're a national party, uh, but only in Timmy Shorter had they had any, like, success. And, you know, here in Cluj, they were campaigning as well, and I was a little bit shocked to see it, because on their on their campaign uh, advertisements and their literature, they actually were advocating, right there, you know, these little stickers, you know, we're for this and we're for that, and we're also for bringing back the monarchy, so... Welcome to the Peasants' Party! Yay, peasants! Yay! Let's bring the king back. So, they're knocked out of power, and uh, 
the red team is not controlling Timmy Schroeder, which should be fun. And let's see what else we got. Oh, and down in CBU, both on the county level as well as the city level, the German party won, as they always do, which means Johann, excuse me, Klaus Johannes, the only honest man that I'm aware of with any national standing, re-elected for his, I believe, fourth or fifth term as mayor of CBU, uh, otherwise known as Hermannstadt. Great town, uh, great organization, and they're doing a heck of a job, which is, you know, you're not going to hear me say that too often, especially when you're talking about uh, Romanian politicians, but he's born in Romania, speaks Romanian, ethnic German, of course he also speaks German, speaks English, you know, the guy is a professor, knows what he's doing, unlike Mong, you know, Klaus Johannes actually wrote his own thesis, you know, he could add 2 plus 2 plus 2 without, you know, using a calculator, so... Yay! Good job for that. Kids, you like the Germans? Yay! Yeah, race the Germans! Alright, so, let's get to some of the wackier... If that wasn't wacky enough, let's get to some of the wackier stuff. Uh, in Kumpia Turzi, which is a little city not too far from Cluj, uh, the Orange Team won, which is uh, not that remarkable because it was running as a re-election. What's remarkable is that the guy is dead. He died before the election. And I guess the red team member sucks so bad that they still voted in the orange team. So, dead man running computerzy. Yay! Yay! And my favorite electoral story from the election, uh, this it was Sunday, all day Sunday, it was in uh, the county of Gorge, where there's an official uh, body, it's called the BEJ, and they're the people who are officially counting the votes. And they have one of these in every county in Romania. And in Gorge, the, the vote counters, you know, who tally up the official results, they went on strike and said, we're not going to count out these votes. Why are they not going to count the votes? Because they didn't get any money to be able to buy food. So he said, no eat, no vote county. So, you know, yeah, good job, fellas. All right, one last thing I want to mention from the news here is, you know, Prince Charles, who I'm a little surprised here in Romania why he's so popular, uh, but he comes to Romania on a regular basis. He's uh, actually somewhat famous or infamous, I don't know which word would be the right one, because he's a big supporter of Romania. He's got a, a, a little bit of land down here in this country, and every once in a while he comes down here and he's like, oh, tut, tut, I say, what a beautiful land. Well, he was in Romania for another visit, and, you know, the news channels, they always do exactly the same thing. They, they, you know, they, they peep outside from far away, and then they find a couple of peasants, you know, Romanian peasants who uh, clean his room and, you know, interview him. And they're like, I can't say nothing, but His Highness is here, you know, no, you know, whoop de whoop But, Prince Charles yesterday was in Bucharest to meet the president of Romania. Not quite sure what in the world they have to discuss, but apparently they have something to discuss, so that's what he was doing. So, between the Peasants' Party, who wants to bring the Romanian king back, who, by the way, is closely related to Prince Charles, uh, the king of Romania is an ancient old guy, he's in his 90s, I believe, um, and his uh, grandmother was Queen Victoria. So, you know, he's actually uh, the closest living um, non-British monarch, who's closest living non-British monarch related to the British monarch. And when the Queen of England, you know, British people, I can understand. The Queen technically is still in power. The Romanian King, you know, whatever. But he's still respected. British Queen had her jubilee party. whoop de whoop You know, I've been sitting around doing nothing for uh, 50 years. And you know, I say, give me a party. Let's have a party. Well, sitting right on her right uh, oh, uh, was none other than the King of Romania. So... That just goes to show you they're pretty close. So Prince Charles had a long chat with Tran Basescu. And uh, as you can see, there's some Twitter activity going on. And that's live as we're going on. I have no control over it. 
uh, it pops up in real time and I also got the Skype going if you want to give me a call I just want to let you know uh, some people are always eh, half joking half not joking talking about me running for political office I will tell you that uh, it's not gonna happen until next year at the very earliest simply because I do not have Romanian citizen citizenship I'm always I don't have blubber jabber. I don't have citizenship here in Romania, and I will not be able to get it until next year. So uh, any future political ambitions are going to be at least a year off. But, you know, it's a good kind of point because, uh, you know, I, I've been watching these elections. I, I saw the national elections, uh, the national coverage. I've certainly seen the elections go on here in Romania. And uh, I wish I had uh, one of my campaign pamphlets uh, just to show you, but it's like, they're, they're all exactly the same. It's like, you get a little brochure, and it's from Party X with their colors. You know, one of them's purple. I actually saw a black one. It's the Gypsy Party. They're black. They have a little three of clubs. I don't know who was running because they had no names, but it said, you know, hey, vote for the Gypsies. All right, well, the normal parties, Party colors, slightly larger picture of uh, the leader, the top top guy. Then there's a you know like like a high school yearbook, all these little photos, and they're all they're all exactly like this. My name is blah blah blah. I am running for I don't know what. Please vote for me. And if it's always of course they're white people because it's from Maine. You know the white guy, occasionally a woman. You know a guy who's got a suit. And he's just looking into space like. I am here to represent you. I am doing political job. Well, okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, circus and elephants going on, but it's there's nothing in there. If you look at the, the, the promises that they make, it, seriously, you the fact that you know it's democracy and you know it's freedom of speech is the only reason you know that it's not a communist era publication. Because it sounds exactly like it is. I will build more uh, parking spaces. I will build more uh, gyms or public uh, sports facilities. I will build roads for the people. The five-year plan. I mean, it's somewhat utilitarian, somewhat proletarian, and completely unimaginative. And if you talk to anybody who is especially interested in, um, you know, job creation, what do they always tell you? They always say, more industry, more factories, for the greater good of the, of the future of the People's Republic. Well, you know, obviously factories are necessary and jobs are important and, and roads are important and these, you know, public sports facilities. All right, awesome. Uh, we all need these things, we all enjoy these things, but there's a lot of things that can be done. And I will tell you, just, I actually sat down and I spent five minutes thinking about what I would run on, just throwing it out there, if I really was running for, say, mayor of Cluj or one of the things. Number one, everything needs to be public. It, it seems an uh, oxymoron that public office government representatives, everything needs to be public. What does that mean? It means every contract the city signs, public. And when I say public, I mean filed, available in some building. You go down there, okay, you pay a small copying fee, you know, for the Xerox, but it's there for anybody. Journalist, citizen, doesn't matter. You don't need any special permission. You don't need anything. You just go down there and say, hey, I want to copy the contract the city signed with the, the garbage removal service company. Okay, here you go, sir. That'll be your three lay. And online. It doesn't cost almost anything. Who owns all the property in this town? Well, there's no way to know. You have to know a guy who knows a guy. All of that needs to be public records. Why? Because all of these people are paying taxes to the city. Now, that's public information. It needs to be online. What about the fees to open a business or run a business? Where are those written down anywhere? They're not written down anywhere. In fact, one of my favorite, uh, Transylvania, oh, ooh, I don't want to say the name, but one of the local uh, TV channels, they filmed something with me a couple months ago. It never got aired as far as I'm aware, but the segment was about how, would it, how is it to open a business in Romania? Now, 
if you're Coca-Cola and you got an army of lawyers and, you know, that kind of stuff, well, then you know, everything's possible. But if you're just a regular person and you want to open a regular business, it's, it's like, uh, you know, here's a sword and a canteen of water. Uh, I hope you make it back. You know, mwah, you know, don't forget to write your will before you leave because you, you may not be coming back. So it's very difficult and it's very confusing. And that includes for Romanians who speak perfect Romanian. It's not a language thing. It's not a foreign thing. You know, all these rules and fees and procedures need to be written down in a clear place. At the office where you need to go and online on the city's website. How, I mean, how hard is that? We're not talking, you know, oh, I got a million, multi-million euro project. We're going to build, you know, the, the ramps and highways and unicorn airports and all this other stuff. No, because the more transparent it is, the more fair it is, the more accessible it is, then the regular person can do it. Because if I know a guy right now and he says, hey, Sam, uh, my aunt just died and uh, I inherited uh, 50,000 years, I want to open a business. What do I do? And I go, dude, good luck. I know a guy who knows a guy, you can call that guy and, and maybe he knows another guy you can call and uh, you know go down there on Tuesday because my cousin's working at the place. No, it needs to be I mean, I used to work for a city in America, and we had an office. It was very easy to find. You know, it wasn't some hidden little labyrinth. You walk in there, you want to open a business, 20 bucks. You fill out one form. One form, 20 bucks, bam. You can start doing business in the city. That easy, folks. It's not that difficult. And then all the fees that are necessary for standard business, obviously, you know, who knows? Somebody might have something weird they want to do. Should be all listed right there. You go down there, okay, hey, how hard is that? All salaries of all city employees from the mayor on down to the lowest guy doing typing or whatever else. Public record. Hey, let me say it in an echo. Public records. Too many wheeler dealer, Heidi, Heidi. Let's make a secret handshake going on like, you know, the former mayor who, of course, is hardly endorsed by Mr. Balk who may still end up winning this thing. He's a great guy. I, I, I can't imagine why anybody would give him a hard time. You know, he only had Rolex watches hiding under a towel when the police came to bust him. And you say, well, hey, hey, well, you know, he likes watches. I got watches at home. You can't blame a guy for watches. Maybe he got them legit. All right, well, they recorded phone calls. And this guy's such a moron, you know, number one. Have you ever watched a police show in your life? Okay, I'm going to use my mobile phone that I have my name attached to that, that is public record. That's my phone, and I'm calling a guy, and I'm saying not even like in code words, like, uh, yeah, I need uh, two bananas at three past midnight, and uh, we'll meet at the uh, usual place. No, he says, hey, I need the money uh, and hide it buying some watermelons down at this uh, marketplace that was selling watermelons. So he's like, hide the money behind some watermelons. Yeah, uh, yeah master, master. I, I wish, you oh, it's a tragedy here. You're not still in the mayor, punk. What else besides all that stuff? Well, uh, how about this? How about a daily report of what the, who the mayor met? Uh, who the city council met, minutes of city council meetings, public meetings, uh, how about regular televised events, like what they call, you know, uh, open house, where the public, once a week, goes down and addresses the mayor and the city council. You know, this is supposed to be your government. See, in Romania, it's like this. You go, uh, I wonder who, who can help me the best. Okay, I'll vote for that guy. And then, never hear from him again unless you got friends or family that are connected with him. You'll never see that guy again. He might blow through your neighborhood once in a while and whoop you. Oh, hey, I saw the mayor. He drove by in his limo. You're never going to get a hold of him. You can write him a letter all day long. Oh, you're never going to get anything back. Email, nothing. Phone, nothing. I mean, I can't even get a return call from the tourism minister. Oh, hey, Mr. Tourism Minister. Oh, hey, oh. Uh, uh, listen, I'm kind of busy, man. How'd you find this office? <laughs> Dude, tourism. Okay? Yeah, all right, whatever. So, 
once a week, once a month, if you can't handle once a week, open forum. Anybody want to come down? Microphone, you sir, got a question? Got a concern? All of it televised. And if you can't find someone to televise it, record it and put it on YouTube. It doesn't cost that much money. Jeez! Uh, well, I got a whole bunch of more stuff here. I'm not even going to get into all of that because um, I'm just too, you know, it kind of makes me too mad. And my cat's having a heart attack over there because he's retarded. <sighs> so, half an hour has gone by. That's enough. I'm not going to get into the rest of this. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, uh, Skype, the remaining show. You can call me every day while the show is live. And we're over here on the Twitter, which you, of course, use the hashtag, the Romania show. Uh, though it hasn't been too overwhelming yet, but we are just getting started. And what else we got? Uh, Timmy, are about ready to get out of here? All right, Timmy says he's about ready. So, what does that mean? It means that, oh, yeah, I appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. And it is time to get Ooh, yeah! It's about time to get out of here, is what I'm thinking. I'll see you later, folks. Thanks for watching.